Thank you so much. Is it just one way or the other? Thank you. Yes, I think so. First off, um, I know most of you were sitting around this morning. Boy, I sure hope they put the banker on last. <laughs> I had a lot of inspirational speakers, and I appreciate all of them. Uh, the only other thing that I had been told was that Marcus was bringing free cider for everybody. <laughs> and, and in fact, I thought that was a requirement. So this afternoon, I had gone to the Morden branch and backed up my vehicle and filled it with cash. But given that Marcus isn't giving it out, I, <laughs> they've taken the money back. So I'm here to talk a little bit about change. We've seen a significant amount of change at Access over the last while. And I know when I got the job, uh, my wife said, you can go out there and take off your career and there won't be much change. But unfortunately, there's been a lot. When our group talks about change, we, we talk about it in three areas. One is within the credit union, and that's more self-induced change, and, and it's things that we have to deal with. There's change in our environment, and that would include the credit union system, financial services across Canada, and the regulatory environment as well. And the last area is technology. And technology has been a game changer, as I'm sure everybody here is aware. It, it has changed how people act every day of their life because of the way technology's changed. So when we look at the credit union, when I came in 2012, our credit union 13 branches, we had around 225 staff, we were about 1.4 billion in size, which made us about fifth in the province. And, and we were moving along very, in a very strong way. If you fast forward to this July, because we have two other credit unions joining us, our credit union is now going to be $12 billion, and we're going to have six branches and we're going to have 1,000 staff and 185,000 members, which is one in seven or one in six Manitoba. That's a significant change, and it's a lot for staff, and it's a lot for members, and we have to be cognizant of that. The environment has also changed, not only provincially. Uh, if you look back 30 years in the credit union system in Manitoba, there was about 77 credit unions. And over a 20-year period, from 93 to 2013, that number went from 77 to 37. So half of the credit union had come together, with, come together with others. The system had grown significantly, but the number of credit unions continued to drop off. And that was in 20 years. In the last 10 years, it's dropped half again. And that, again, is a significant impact on our staff and our members. There's a lot larger credit unions that we're dealing with, and, and that changes how you have to interact with members. In addition to that, there's the regulatory side. Everybody knows that when the financial problems hit in 2008, the Canadian financial institution system did amazingly well. It was a blip on the radar to, to uh, the public. The regulators, though, they didn't stop there. They've continued to change regulations as we've moved along for the last 15 years. And I will say, because I don't think there's any regulators here, they've done an amazing job in, in making the system strong. And so they, they're to be commended. But the third thing I talked about which was technology. And in 2008, 2007, whenever Steve Jobs launched the iPhone, it had a huge impact. Up until then, people actually used their phones as a phone. After that, they've used it for everything else. And many times, I know our staff, feel that we are driving members out of the branch because we're offering them technology. And it's actually the opposite. What we've seen is members coming to financial... This probably started in about 2011, where they said, you know what? The most security out there is at airport. That I can go on my phone and I can book a flight. I can check in at the airport and I can download my boarding pass, all with my phone. 
why am I still having to come to the credit union? That got the system thinking, and what happened out of that was anywhere was, was invented. And people were able to deposit their checks with their phone. Well, that changed a lot of things for a lot of people, members and staff, as far as how we did things. From there, e-commerce came about, then COVID. And with COVID, we had lots of staff working at home because of technology, because you could. We had members who said, your branch is closed and I've still got to borrow money. How do I sign these documents? Well, we launched DocuSign and people signed at home. Again, a significant change that everybody had to adjust to. One story I have on technology, when the pandemic hit, uh, the fellow who's our, who was our chair at the time, he was very worried about his parents. Kurt was his name, he lived in Altona, and his parents lived in Altona, but he said, you know, they're late 70s, and I'm worried that they're not gonna be able to do their banking, our branches are closed. So he went over there one day and he said, I'm gonna show you, mom and dad, how to download this app, I'm gonna show you how to pay a bill, I'm gonna show you how to do an e-transfer, I'm gonna show you how to transfer money. He said it took him about an hour, they were fine doing it all, they did a couple things and he went home, very happy. And we're often told how, you know, the older people don't wanna deal with technology. So that was fine. Next morning he gets a call and it's from his mom. And his mom says, you know, Kurt, just so you know, when your dad and I pass, there's not going to be any money. Dad really likes e grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> so in my mind, this just shows me how people can adapt and do adapt. We used to think at the credit union, credit union that people were sitting at home going, boy, I can hardly wait to go to the credit union. And we know it isn't that way. People want convenience, and that's what they get. But now we're in the middle of all these changes. Changes at the credit union, changes in the environment, and changes through technology. So how do you deal with the impact of that change? Well, really, you know, the way we look at it is people are impacted individually, especially with all of this change. And you have to be able to deal with people. The second part is your culture can be changed as you move through all of these occurrences. And then we have to remember that process can be changed and you have to be able to adapt to that. So when we look at our people, what's the biggest thing that happens and what's the biggest impact? It's stress. We've gone through mergers and there's a lot of stress involved, we understand that. People can isolate themselves and really do what's called quiet quitting. They really don't want to be involved in any more of this stress and they could look at going elsewhere. So you have to be cognizant of that. The other side is they could just simply disconnect. You could see people that they really want to keep their head down, they don't want to be involved in this change, and they may not understand why the change is occurring. So you really have to be aware of the people that you're working with. When it comes to culture at Access, we really do pride ourselves on our culture. We believe in trust, we believe in empowerment, and we believe in accountability. We make it clear to our employees, we try to make it as clear as we possibly can, that we trust them. We know they're gonna do their job, we compensate them, and we trust that they're going to do it well but we also empower them to do the job as best they can. I want people that are going to want to make those decisions, that are gonna to want to do that job that's best for the member. And we've got lots of staff that that's what they want. We hire people that are comfortable with change. We help people through the change, but they wanna be empowered to do their job. What I don't want is someone having to run to somebody to sign things every time they make a decision. I want people to be able to decide. I find staff are much more engaged if they can decide.
And then we all understand that we're accountable, not just to the members, but we're accountable to each other. And we're accountable for the decisions we make. Not because we want to catch people making a wrong decision, but we want to learn from our decisions. So those are the, the impacts around culture. And we've had six organizations join us in the last two and a half years. There's a lot involved in shifting that culture so that everybody is aligned. So there, it is something that you have to be aware of. The last one I mentioned was, was procedure. As things change, you have to change those procedures. We used to have people that came in every day to deposit their checks. Well, now they deposit them from home with their phone. That changes your process, and you have to change that process. And you have to be aware it's going to change, and the stress it's going to cause as you change the process. So when you're dealing with that impact, there's really... There's really three things you can do to help everybody through it. One is change management. You have to be aware of the changes that are happening and how you can move people through that process. We have, we have people that uh, we've created, actually, a team that is called our transition team, integration team, one of those names you can pick. And they're there to help us through mergers. We learned after the first one that we made a mistake. We didn't have a team in place that could stop everything from colliding. We've got a major, sorry, we've got a great staff that wants to help the members. They want to do things in a very quick manner. But we learned quickly, you can't do everything at once. And for me, I have to take the accountability on the first one. When we had access and Crosstown Civic come together, I said to the marketing department, sorry, Adam, he's out there, um, it would be great if when we came together, we could have all the signage changed at the Crosstown Civic branches in the city so we could see access everywhere. Well, we rushed and did that. They did a great job. Understandably, though, access members who were in the city as soon as they saw the sign change, they went, well, this is great. I can do everything I used to do out in the rural branches. But we hadn't trained everybody yet to do that. So that was my mistake, understanding. Now I'm not involved in any of the decisions when it comes to <laughs> mergers. And, and marketing takes the lead on that. But it, it's important that we do learn when we make those mistakes. We're very clear with staff. We understand they can make mistakes. So as you're dealing with the three areas of change, as you're dealing with the impact of change, you have to use the change management. You have to listen to staff, and you have to explain to them why you're doing these things. We try and do it as much as we can, uh, but it is difficult sometimes. You have to get the message across in two or three ways so that everybody is understanding it. And then once you do that, you have to have the empathy when you're dealing with your staff. Understanding they're going through stress, understanding it's a lot of change for them, and really listening to what they're saying. Because there could be things that you've missed that ha you haven't considered in the change and that you want to consider going forward. And then at the end of the day, we, we just want to understand and move people through the process in a, in a consistent manner. And you can do that through leadership. It's probably the key element of all of the change management. You do need to lead people and make sure they understand you're there to support them as they go through all of this change. With access, we have our four values. And and we try to ad adhere all of our leadership, not only people that are in leadership positions, but everybody who wants to take the lead as we transition. Our first value is that we want to do good. So for that, in my mind, it's doing the best you can for the members, doing the best you can for other staff, so that we're all working together through this process. The next one is to be better. We want to continue to improve. 
That could involve training, could involve education, it could involve learning from our mistakes. But we want to continue to get better. And then the third one is we want to own it. If, if we've made an incorrect decision, we want to own that decision, we want to learn from it, and then we have our last value, which is move forward. We want to keep moving forward in the best interest of the members, in the best interest of our staff, so that we become a very strong credit union that members want to deal at. Once we do all that, it should go a long way to assisting our staff in moving through this change or these changes. Thank you very much.